Hello everybody and welcome to Green Star Trading with me Tom. All views, opinions and ideas expressed in this video are my own and do not constitute financial or trading advice in any way. Right then, um, we're going to zero in on a single stock today here on YouTube and we're going to look at Amazon Incorporated. Mega cap retailer of the world which just continues to go from higher high to higher high and higher low to higher low and so on and so forth as this massive bull market continues to progress. And uh, on that note, I wanted to start on the long term, on the weekly chart, looking at the long term price action of Amazon. We will come in and look at the short term Elliott Wave stuff later in the video, but I wanted to start on the long term because I see an excellent opportunity with this one. For people who are new to the channel here, who maybe want to join the Patreon, who are thinking about getting into Elliott Wave and practicing it. And um, there are many charts like this, and all the mega cap stocks, um, and some all the blue chip stocks, which just march forward in time over the decades. And they reveal this to us and uh, we make a best effort at explaining it but I wanted to show you how I go about doing things and uh, this is only a small snippet so I don't want to overdo it but we're gonna start on the long-term time frame and I'm gonna talk you through how I've approached this so the first thing I'm interested in is I'm interested in the scale um, the severity and time frame of these corrections it's the corrections I'm interested in the rest will reveal itself so we look at the price corrections here and we've got a 95% decline this is the tech bubble this is when Amazon was a book company okay and everyone and their mates said it was dead after it fell 95% right oh my god how did a book company get so stupidly overvalued that was insanity right this thing's never coming back and now here today is the world's biggest retailer okay so that's how things can change we then see a series of pretty severe corrections 57 percent 56 percent 20 and then we go into lesser ones 29 32 30 31 36 and then a bigger one more recently of 56 percent decline we can look at the time frame these things take as well okay so we've got six um six six five one thousand twenty two three nine uh, three nine two two seven three 559 and 539 here now I have a saying which I often talk about um, when talking about counts which is what we don't give up in price we give up in time okay so if we're not going to implode 90 odd percent the correction will likely drag out longer and if we're going to drag out much longer in time the correction is likely to be less severe so what you don't give up in price you give up in time now what we can then do once we've got these ideas these things in place we can bring up our exponential moving averages on the weekly time frame and we can help confirm what we're seeing so we can see how here we don't have the 250 going all the way back through the tech bubble collapse but we can see clearly that if we were to drag that average backwards we corrected well below it on the weekly time frame we then have two severe corrections of between around 60 percent long in long in time frame and deep which overlap one another so these are obvious wave twos right they pull back through the 250 they're deep and they're time consuming and they're pretty scary things right and um, then we progress above the 250 day exponential moving average and we stay above it until the closest we get to it is back here around 2015 and then we don't come through the 250 again until we come up all the way up to here so what we want to do here is we want to start projecting some geometry forward in time. So what we want to start with are some channels and some pitchforks. Now I've set up all my own pitchforks and you can do them however you like. I do have videos on the Green Star Trading Discord and on the Patreon who go through all of these processes. So if you're interested in learning how to do it in more detail, you can sign up. But either way, we've got um, here's our super cycle degree pitchfork. This is off of the first one two high. So at that point, let's introduce a simplified version of the count. At every wave degree, within the wave 3, after we set that wave 2, we spend time moving back from the lower pivot into the median line from below. And we may well spend more and more time progressing underneath the median line until eventually we break out in the 3 of the 3 and we tend to move above said median line and then we will spend time moving back and forth above and below it. But likely, once we get an above it again, we'll stay above it until we reach the peak of the market. We can then um, also look at, for example, the cycle degree pitchfork, 
here, which we can see that all price action from that point is still maintained inside of it. However, we can see that the intermediate pitchfork did complete its five waves higher and we broke out of it, suggesting that the intermediate wave degree here was completed. We could do the same again with channels. So if we bring up the simplified count here, we bring up our cycle channel. We can see that we are still within our cycle degree channel and we can see that we are still within our primary degree channel, but we came straight back to test to bottom it. Two, four, project from the three to find the five. Elliot's second method of applying an Elliot channel. So we could put Elliot channel around this, suggesting that the five is still above us and at primary wave degree. So what this means is that we are within super cycle degree three, long term super cycle degree three, gonna take many, many years to complete. We are within cycle degree three, but we have completed primary degree three and intermediate degree within primary three. We've now completed primary four, are progressing within primary five, within cycle three, within super cycle three. I hope that makes some sense. Now, this is all just a case of using the moving averages, the size of the corrections, the depth of the corrections, and projecting the geometry forward using the rules in the Elliott Wave um, theory. So by Frost and Pretcher using the book and projecting these channels from 1 to 3 for 4 to find 5, from 2 to 4 to 3 to find 5, and doing this across multiple wave degrees, and the price will be contained within these pieces of geometry, as long as we've got our assumptions about the wave degrees correct. Now these are all self-confirming things, so the more confluence we have between all of these factors, the more likely we've got ourselves in the right place. There's no guarantees that we're in the right place, but it increases the probability of it being correct. So if we are now within primary degree 5 of cycle degree 3, we could finish at any time, as per the rules, we could finish at any time that we clear primary degree 3. And uh, we've already cleared prime degree three, so it's possible that we're done. It is possible that we had a very short five, and it's already over. Now, I don't believe that's very likely, okay, but it is possible. So if we were to, for example, um, assume that we were done now, then that would mean that cycle degree three was complete, and now a very large correction at cycle degree, likely larger than primary degree, will now ensue. So a couple of, it could be multiple months, multiple years. I don't think that's the case myself as I think the geometry would be very off. And if there's one thing which has been consistent throughout this whole time, it's just how really respectful Amazon has been of that long-term geometry. So a completion around the median line or even higher for a blow off fifth seems more likely and may take a very long time to complete. So that's where we are in the long term. Okay. So a quick word on wave personality before we move on to the Elliott Wave section of the shorter term, which we'll have a look at. So these corrections, we can see in the beauty of hindsight, right, were buying opportunities, okay, obviously. During the most recent one, 2022, I was screaming from the top of my lungs, for God's sake, you just had a 50% discount in Amazon stock, you buy it. You don't ask questions, you buy it. You have a 50% discount in Google, you buy it. You have the 50% discount in Meta, you buy it. Okay. Don't be one of the foolish bears who fight this thing over the long term, right? Because this thing's a rocket ship. It's only going one way. Now, I'm not saying don't have a short. You could have made 95% during the short of the, you know, the tech bubble collapse. If you aced it, nobody aced it. But if you if you got even a chunk of it, you maybe made 60, 70%. Maybe you levered up and made more. But, you know, the real winner here isn't the 95% short or the 56% short or the 65% short. The real winner here is, you know, the... 68,000% gain. That's the real winner here. And um, I know it was an old voice who said it, but time in the market, as we can see from this chart here, beats time in the market. Now, don't think this applies to everything all the time. If you're looking at some piece of shit stock, which is in negative equity, um, as hemorrhaging money, can't report a single bit of earnings, uses price to sales metrics to try and value itself, and it's just dog shit. Right, that doesn't apply. We're talking about good companies, good stocks with healthy balance sheets, excellent cash flow statements, good free cash flow to long term debt ratios, good working capital ratios, healthy companies, right, which continue to grow. If you're looking at a company like that 
A 50% discount is a buying opportunity you should never turn your nose about. And that's what Wave Personality is all about. There's a video about it on the Green Star Trading Education channel on the Discord. And it reminds us that the, the Wave degree corrections, so primary degree here, intermediate, they are going to be accompanied by news events, which are going to be relative in scale to the correction that's occurring. You understand? Or vice versa, depending on which one you believe moves which. So let's say, for example, you have a tech bubble collapse and stock market crash. This was 95% pullback in hours, and this was our first larger wave degree. This is a bit of a calamity, and therefore suitably is a larger wave degree. Um, it could be a global financial crisis. It could be Russia invading Europe for the first time since the first war in Europe since the end of the Second World War. You know, so it could be uh, whatever. It could be COVID. Whatever it is, the event will reflect the wave degree and the severity of the, the problem and identifying these things that are all talked about in Elliott Wave Personality which is in the Elliott Wave Principal book by Frost and Prechter and uh, you can get the latest uh, version of it and I encourage you to read it but either way I digress just a, a reminder you know you, you don't argue with this thing right and you don't argue with well we'll leave it there because I don't want to preach I know it sounds a bit preachy there are, just remember what I'm saying is there are always bearish voices all the time. Always telling you why it's different this time. Why this particular alien invasion or disaster is truly the end of the world. Why it's all going to stop tomorrow. Why it's all going to roll over and why it's never coming back. But they are just perpetually wrong. And have been. You've only got to look at a chart of the S&P 500 since the bottom of the crash in 1929. Or well later on in 1930, 31. Uh, to realise that they've been wrong for but coming on for a hundred years. The day will come when they're right, but they're probably dead by then. So don't worry about it, is what I'm saying. Recognise where you are, recognise what you're looking at, and take the opportunities for the longer term when they come. Keep your powder dry and stay calm. Easier said than done, I know. I sound awfully sage saying this stuff to you now. I've been there, I've done it wrong, I've been on the wrong side of it. We all had to start somewhere, we've all screwed it up. Okay, um, I'm just a, another retail trader, just like everybody else in this world who isn't uh, who isn't professing otherwise. So in that regard, I'm just trying to help take the opportunities when they come. Now, anyway, let's move in now to a shorter term time frame and see what we can see. So we're going to bring up a more complex count. We're going to zoom in to. We're going to come down. <coughs> Excuse me for coughing. Got a bit of a sore throat at the moment perpetually sick this time of year we're going to come into um the eight hour time frame and we're going to bring up a, some ideas we've got our, our primary count here right. so once again applying what we've done on the longer term time frame to the shorter term time time frame we're going to come off of linear here since <coughs> sorry excuse me <coughs> excuse me we're going to come off of log here and come into linear so we've got a wave one and a wave two forming our base channel. First lows projected off the first high. We come up into a wave three, forms a triangle into a wave four, back tests that base channel, moves to the median line to finish within an Elliott channel based off of the two from the four projected from the three to project the five. We've got a top in place at this point, which we have yet to come back to. We have yet to come back above this level. Right. So this could be a this could be a high, this could be it. That's a possibility. Or it could just be a one within our larger primary wave five into a two. Now from that point, we've got a couple of options. So let's have a look. First thing we're going to do is we're going to introduce an uh, we're going to introduce an invalidation point back at the bottom of the base channel, where we've completed our larger wave degree. And we're going to put an invalidation point in here. If we fall below this, this is wrong. That's 15160. Okay. And then if we come in a little bit closer, let's say to the four hour, we've got a couple of ideas here. We've got a short time frame count into another one, into another two, and this will be another one into another two, progressing forward. Three, four, five, and we're off to an all-time high. We're off to an all-time high shortly, in a pretty short order as well. <coughs> Excuse me, but 
this does not have as nice a look to it as we would like if we're trying to be bullish. We get what appears to be a free wave move as opposed to a five wave move. Now you can count it as a five wave move with a very brief wave four, but it has very poor proportion with the wave two. Right? So we can just count this as free up. Now it could be free up anyway, because this could be a diagonal that's forming, and maybe we're not done yet. Maybe we come down, and then we come back up, and then down, and then back up, and we get a contracting diagonal, or maybe we get an expanding diag a diagonal. I don't know. So this could be 5 into 1, or it could be ABC into 1. Motive wave could be free wave structure if it forms a diagonal eventually. So one of the Elliott wave rules. So at the smaller time frame, we can now add in another invalidation point. If we come below here, we can't have our minute 2 completed at this level. We have to move it lower, and then we have to reconsider what we're looking at. Pre-market is trading pretty strongly higher. At the moment, we closed at one, uh, 190 spot 84 yesterday. We're trading 194 spot 66 in the pre-market. So looking pretty strong. So we're going to grab all this and we're going to put this into the STF, which stands for short time frame. Let's save the chart. Next thing we can consider is a flat pattern. Could be done. Already might take a bit longer. So an alternative interpretation would be this is free down into A. This is free back into B since it came to the 89% Fibonacci retracement, which qualifies the 90% retracement for a B wave flat, for a regular flat. Come down in the C. And we'll change this into minor degree and we'll make sure it's orange. So this would now be A, A, B, C, B. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. With the pre-market already above that B wave high, if we open there, this counts immediately invalid. And this is why I've considered the possibility that it's a zigzag into another zigzag for our B wave. And our B wave is actually going to go for higher targets of either 100%, 123.6 or 138.2. And it's going to end up over here somewhere. Right? And we're going to have a B wave run. And then we're going to come back down in 5 to new lows because this would be an expanded flat pattern. Which means the C will come down deeper than where the A began. So we put all these polys and stuff into the flat folder. Okay, and that is essentially the short term view I've got at the moment. I'm waiting to see if we continue to 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 and blow up higher or whether we are weakening as we go into the high and looking to peak. So if we just zoom out again and we bring back up the primary count on a larger time frame, we can see that we've got a completed 1 or the 2 is going to be longer in duration and it's going to be over here somewhere as a result of a flat pattern forming like this or if we stay below the high if we don't open higher if we stay below the all-time high we could have a zigzag into a retracement into a zigzag and it could be a double zigzag WXY as opposed to a flat it doesn't really matter we've come back 90% already okay so one way or the other but for the moment we're going to keep the two over here and suggest that the severity of this pullback the sharpness of it was it's clearly a sharp the fact that it's 25% essentially is, is, is sufficient for an intermediate degree wave 2 correction back to the bottom of the base channel to find support before thrusting higher. And that is essentially how I see the count over the shorter term. We're going to take the opportunity to update some of our um, folders here because it's been a long time since I've looked at this. So I'm going to switch these over to support because they were resistance not too long ago. That's how time changes everything. We've got our invalidation point there. We're going to bring up a fixed range volume profile over the shorter term. And we're going to have a look for the little vacuums which form, the little gulfs. So we've got one sat over here across prior highs. That's going to be an interesting potential support level. We've got the prior lows and prior highs there as well mixed in. We've also got a gap in the chart. Which has never been repaired. Is it there on the day chart? Oh, excuse me. Sorry, it was repaired during the wave 2 here. So you can see we had a gap. Right. Finished moving away from the gap. Came back, filled gap. So that's, that, that piece of damage to the chart has already been repaired. So although I've just alluded to it, we don't need to worry about that now. So we've done what we needed to do structurally. We've moved up, we've repaired the chart, come back to long term 
trend support moved away from it off to new all-time highs or we're not we shall see so i'm just going to leave account there now and uh, oh no sorry that should have gone into the other folder i should have gone into the support folder there we go support and resistance save the chart so now let's wrap up with some classical analysis and we'll look at our momentum indicators, moving averages and RSI readings and see if we've got signs of a top in place. So let's turn off the count. Get rid of all this noise. And see where we are. So 250 day exponential moving average was pierced uh, during the August correction, suggesting a larger wave degree completion. We've spoken about this before, right? So we've had our five waves up, we've had our larger completion. It could have to come down again, as we were speaking about in the Elliott Wave section, but we've now since moved back above the 250, through the 10, through the 20, through the 60, all moving averages now trending higher again. <coughs> 250 still pointing up, no, no death cross on the larger time frame. If we look at our momentum indicators, we can see that we are still packing some pretty strong momentum here off of recent high um, there was actually a little of hidden bullish divergence here where we've got lower highs in the price but slightly higher highs in momentum. We've got um, no such thing here unfortunately. We'd have to have higher highs in price. So we've just got lower highs in the RSI but we've got lower highs in price and so no divergence there. We're below the current highs in the RSI and the MACD in both cases. So we need to see if we start to build divergence from here because if we were to set new highs now, right, we'd be looking to see if there's divergence forming between previous highs and current price. Okay, but we're not higher yet. So there's no clear daily divergence, bear, bearish divergence at all. Um, so nothing to worry about there for the moment, back in neutral territory in both the MACD and the RSI. Now the OBV is in a long term upward trend that just continues to move higher. And we're actually setting higher highs in the ABV. So that's kind of bullish. We're projecting higher pricing to come, essentially, with the accumulation of bullish volume, suggesting that we've broken out of a little range here. So we just put a bunch of lines across here. You can see what I mean. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a it looked like an expanding pattern. And we've broken out higher with the volume. So where volume tends to lead, price will likely follow. Not all the time, but we'll see. So that looks kind of bullish. RSI looks neutral. MACD looks neutral over the day time frame. I would say odds on we push for a new all-time high. Um, I won't give you a percentage, but I say over. I'd be more in favour of an all-time high than I would be breaking down from here. Okay, and then let's come over to the weekly time frame and see what we can see. So on the weekly time frame, we had a warning into this high that it was coming. Weekly time frames you want you want to watch when it comes to find projecting larger to, larger wave corrections you're going to show up on larger time frames. So all of this here was bearish divergence. We can see clearly bearish divergence reset back to zero on the momentum indicator, back to the zero bound of the average and the signal coming back. Bearish histogram building up the whole time, building up bearish momentum before we even get into this correction. Okay. We saw the same here with the Mac, uh, with the RSI, multiple weeks, multiple months of bearish divergence. So this this thing was being telegraphed from a mile away, right? So anybody with eyes could see it, uh, but only if they're looking for it, of course. And I'm not being arrogant. I'm just saying if you're looking for it, you would have seen it. Okay. So we did have bearish divergence. Has it played out and completed? Well, we moved the RSI back to neutral. We moved the MACD back to neutral. The OBV flattened out. Right, but it has yet to make new highs. So on the weekly time frame, we haven't led higher yet. We're just in this little support area at the moment. So interesting to see if we break lower on the OBV on the weekly time frame or whether we break higher and make new highs. The day is leading the way, the day time frame is leading the way and leading us higher. So perhaps we're gonna swing high off of these reset pardon me, excuse me, <laughs> sorry. We're gonna we're gonna um, swing higher off of these reset conditions would be my guess but if we move higher the second we move to all new time highs we have to remember that this bearish divergence is continuing right the reset was to neutral 
if we continue higher and eventually take out these highs in the MACD, take out these highs in the RSI, if we continue to set lower readings in the MACD and the RSI, then that longer term divergence is going to continue to build up. So it's just a warning that we were weak into the high here, we've corrected, but the correction may not be over yet. We're in a trend of higher highs and higher lows. The trend is your friend. Right? I know it's not a boring old saying, but it's true. So we'll just add in some extra little pivots into the chart here. We've already got our long-term invalidation point. So these are going to break down our 1, 2, 1, 2 count from being correct. Right? 1, 2 here, 1, 2 here. Um, this could have been the 1, 2. I mean, it depends how you look at it with a diag. I'm just going to leave that one. I'm going to say suggest that this is a minor pivot here. So things start to break down once we get through 180 spot 26. We've got to have a bit of a rethink for the bullish count, but we've got bearish explanations already. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that's that's it on the day time frame and the weekly time frame. So anything to look at on the monthly time frame? Still positive momentum, way up at 14 spot 33. Coming off of overbought conditions on the monthly time frame. Moving back below month, um, um, overbought conditions, OBV continues to push higher over the longer term. Could be signed to topping out. Got a lot of um, got a lot of weakness to show up yet though. No multi-month divergence. This was a higher high on the RSI. This was a higher high on the MACD. This high and all the price action move below it is supported by the slowdown in the MACD and the RSI. There was no multi-month divergence now. The bigger the problem, the bigger the pullback, the bigger the warning. We got a warning on the weekly time frame. We did not get it here on the monthly time frame. So the likelihood of this being a cyclical important top is lessened. We have every reason to push higher and start to keep the momentum going higher, keep the RSI going higher. But we'll tell in time. It's going to be several months until we know that for certain. All right then, guys. That's all I've got. So for the meantime, trend is your friend. It's still bullish. It's still going higher. Assume a 1 2 is complete. If things start to break down, we've got an alternate idea of a flat in play for an ABC. We can come back and revisit it and see what evidence there is. All right, guys, that's everything I've got for Amazon. So if you're new to the channel and you like what you've seen, please subscribe, smash the like, hit the little bell notification icon, and remain informed of future video releases. And feel free to sign up to the Patreon. There's a link in the description box below, or don't. It's totally up to you. Um, but feel free to come over and have a look at what's available. And if you're not following me on Twitter yet, feel free to do so as well. Take care of yourselves, guys. I'll be back with you later in the week with an update for Bitcoin. Because we all know what's going on there at the moment. Take care of yourselves, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.